And let's give it a few more seconds and we'll see if we have anybody else coming in right away. Oh, we got Kathy. Welcome, Kathy. Don. Oh, man, these are going to start going. I, I feel like a Peloton instructor right now. I'm like uh, <laughs> high-fiving and welcoming all the, all the riders. Hey, that's a good question. Anybody actually joining from any sort of workout equipment right now? We don't know, so could happen. If you are on a Peloton or any other kind of workout equipment, please tell us uh, in the chats. It'll make me feel healthier just knowing that you're doing something like that. <laughs> I shamefully have not ridden our bike in a while because <laughs> I fell off and hurt my leg, and then I've used that as my excuse for two months now. Um, I'm solid. All right. I'm inspired. I'm going to go hop on my spin bike now. Nice. So one. <laughs> Well, welcome uh, early birds. I think we will just jump right in and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, my name is Eric Schimmelfenny and I am a kitchen designer who also uses SketchUp uh, pretty extensively in kitchen designs. And so what we're gonna show you today is how to take a model like this that you've created in SketchUp. Um, so this is a, a kitchen model like this, and so um, you can put it into an application that comes with SketchUp Pro called Layout. And so what Layout does is it takes your 3D model like this, and it will help you turn it into two-dimensional sections and elevations uh, that you can add notes, you can add dimensions on, um, you can add cabinet lists, um, any type of information that you want so that people in the field, you know, can use your drawings to assemble your cabinets or get countertop quotes or electrical or plumbing or whatever it is that you need. So this is a, a layout document here. Um, it's almost completed. I, I left it um, somewhat uncompleted. So we only have a half an hour today. So I want to kind of go through these steps um, somewhat quickly so you guys can see sort of the beginning and the end result. Um, but the really unique thing about the, the SketchUp to layout workflow is that this document that we're looking at here, so this is obviously a, you know, a 2D wall section, um, and these 3D views, they're all derived from the source 3D model. And while there, there's nothing particularly special about this model, it's just a 3D model. And so you model in full scale as it would exist in real life, um, and this is the this is the really fun and unique part of SketchUp that makes this a great sales tool, right? So if you came to any of the other sessions, you, you would see that it's pretty quick to mass up a kitchen and start getting an idea of what the layout can be. And um, you know, when I worked full time in a showroom, you would do this all the time. You know, go out and do field measurements, uh, start mocking up a kitchen. You know, we could sort of work directly with a client. You know, when we could go in showrooms and 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 do that. And then you don't have to like throw away the 3D model to then turn it into those construction documents. So um, I'll kind of jump right in and I'll, I'll show you how to do it. So imagine that you have just created this, uh, this beautiful kitchen model here in SketchUp and your client is uh, you know, giving it the thumbs up. You now need to do some dimensioning and some layouts uh, so that you can get quotes and get an order started and all that sort of stuff. So, what you want to do is um, you want to slice up your kitchen so that you can get those sections and elevations. So I'll just do one here so you can see how it works. And so you can take the uh, SketchUp here has this tool. Um, I'll actually start this over so you can see where the tool is. When you first turn SketchUp on, if you haven't altered it in any way, you can get a toolbar like this. And if you go to View, Tool Palettes, or if you're on a PC, I believe it's Toolbars, you can turn on one that says Large Tool Set. It's right here at the top. And that's gonna give you the original set of tools at the top, and it's also gonna give you a few extras. The one we're gonna be looking for is section plane. So you click that, and when you move section plane around, the, the plane, as it were, is going to align to whatever flat object you have it on. So you can see it kind of rotating and spinning around here. So to slice up this far wall, let's say, with the, uh, with the sink on it, I'm just gonna click here, and you can name the section if you want. You don't really have to. Um, I, don't often name them. Um, and so now I've got this plane and you can see it started to cut this wall here. So if I just click on it to select it, it'll kind of turn blue to indicate that it's selected. I can take my move tool and just click on the plane and I can move it and I can slice up my kitchen. So you can see here that now I've got a slice of this wall. And, and man, I remember like 20 years ago when I was first learning about drafting and what section planes were, I had no understanding of how these works. Like the, I remember the, the woodworker that was teaching me was like, you know, it's like if you, 
you're looking at it from the side. And it's like, that doesn't look like from the side. And if someone could have just shown me SketchUp in 1999, I would have totally gotten it. Um, so uh, that being said, so we've got this, um, we've got the section plane here. And I, I want to save a preset view because if we go over to layout, when you look at this section view that's here, um, this one is flat. It's not in perspective. It's a very traditional um, you know, section or elevation, however you're, you're referring to it. So I want to kind of recreate that in SketchUp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click on this and say align view. And that's going to get me one step of the way there. So I'm looking directly into that section, but it's still in perspective. I really want it in kind of a traditional um, parallel uh, projection. So I can go to view and well, I just totally blanked out <laughs> where it is. Oh, camera. I'm sorry. So you go over to camera and you can change it from uh, perspective to parallel. And when I click parallel, that's going to turn it into that 2D uh, flat section. So before I do anything else, before I move, you don't want to rotate or do anything else, I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to add a scene. And um, what this is going to do, I'm just going to say save as new style. This is going to create a tab at the top of the document. And what a scene tab is, it's like a recorded view or a recorded location of where you are. So what I can do is if I now move away, I rotate somewhere differently, and I, and I click again on the scene one tab, it's going to bring me right back into that same view. And when we go into layout, that's how I was able to create this view as I referenced that scene one tab that I just created here in layout. So again, we'll go back and you'll see how this happens. Um, oops, there's the uh, wrong kitchen. Uh, where's my kitchen? Here we go. So now just for a little housekeeping, I am going to um, hide this section cut and I'm gonna turn it off like this, and I'm gonna put the camera back in perspective. So we're back in sort of this view here. This is kind of my normal presentation view. And I'm gonna to go to view, animation, and I'm gonna add another scene. And I'll just go ahead and save this as a new style. We won't really get into that right now. So now I have scene number two at the top, and I can toggle back and forth between these two scenes. So I can go to this one, and then I can go back to this one. So it's an easy way to toggle back and forth. I'm actually just going to go in and do a little housekeeping on this one, update the scene. And if there are any questions so far, feel free to post them at any time. And I'll, um, or if there's anything in the chat, I don't think I have that open right now, but I'll let Aaron shout out any questions if they arise as we're going along here. Um, okay, so now we've got these two scenes set up, um, our perspective and our scene one. So I'm going to save this kitchen, I'm just going to save this as. And we'll go over to our desktop and we say, okay, so now this is the cool part. So we are in SketchUp right now, the 3D modeler. And so I'm gonna go to uh, send to layout. And so what you have to do is you have to save first, which I just did. Then you click send to layout and this will actually open up layout. And it will put this kitchen in layout. And we're gonna have to make some choices when it first fires up here. So we'll wait a second here for it to pop up. Oh, get a little thing over here. All right. So first thing that comes up, it's we're going to pick our template. And I'm just going to do um, letter landscape. Um, you can set up your own templates with title blocks and things like that. Maybe we'll talk about that at the end. But I want to get to the good part. I want to lay out a kitchen. So uh, you have, this is essentially a piece of paper, right, that you could either sort of quote unquote print as a PDF or print for real on a printer if you wanted to do that. And you can have, um, you can sort of set the size here by dragging around. So maybe I'll put this somewhat like this. And I'm going to uh, right click this and go to standard views. I'm gonna go to top like this. And that's gonna give me that perspective top view of the kitchen. And then if you wanna sort of move, like center the view up a little bit, you can actually double click on it and you can um, orbit or pan around like this, and then when you're done, just click outside of the, uh, the view. I like to keep it kind of lined up like this. And if you, if you hold down shift, it'll let you pan around. So I always like to start typically with a top view. This is a really good place to put notes and things like that. So we can say, you know, um, plate storage, 
and maybe I can make this not run off the side of the page like that. And so it's really easy to add notes and things like that. And you can actually um, add uh, dimensions in a 3D view, which is somewhat unique to SketchUp. So we can go through here and add some you know, wall dimensions like this. And I know doing uh, dimensions on like a perspective, um, drawing is kind of non-traditional drafting, but I really like it, especially for stuff like this. It really um, helps you understand you know, where these dimensions are coming from. And especially if you have like a client that wants to take this plan somewhere and, and really understand it, you know, you can kind of do both. Like you can have a view that is um, parallel projection and you can also have one that's perspective too. Um, in fact, why don't we just do that? So um, this is our first page. So I'm gonna click plus here and I'm gonna create another page. And you can actually see now we have page uh, one here and page two. And what I can actually do is if I wanna copy this viewport, I can just right click it and click copy. This is typically how I do it. And I'll right click again and hit paste. And so let's say I wanted to do that uh, parallel projection I was just talking about. I could right click this and just turn off perspective. And now I have that parallel projection. So I can go through here and I can put my dimensions you know, in, in the same way. And so you kind of get the idea of how that works. Um, you can also set these to scale as well. So if we go over to our SketchUp model here, um, we can change these to a particular scale. So right now we're in quarter inch scale, um, but I could change this to three sixteenths, uh, half inch is a, you know, kind of a typical scale. Um, and so that'll recalculate. That's not gonna fit on our eight and a half inch by 11 paper. So I'll go back to quarter inch scale. Um, so the, the scale can be arbitrary or it can be finite if you wanted to print these things out to scale, you know, for a contractor or an architect or something on a job site. Um, so let's do that. Uh, let's do that scene uh, that we created that that elevation. So I'm going to actually put that on another page. So I'm going to hit um, you can hit plus either up here or down here in your pages list. So I'll make a new page. And this is the way I typically do it. I like to copy my viewport, go to the next uh, place, uh, go to the next page and hit paste. And now I can right click on this Actually, I can do it in two places here, but I'll just right click on this and I can go over to scenes. And remember how we had scene one and scene two? So watch what happens if I click scene one, that's gonna go back. Um, oh, that's gonna go to my, uh, oh, they changed this, hang on a second. We're gonna do this a little differently. So we're gonna go to insert. And we're gonna find our SketchUp model that we just made. And we're gonna insert it in here. Okay. And now we are going to go to scene one, which was our, um, our elevation. I'll explain why I did it that way in just a moment. Um, okay, so now we're gonna check our scale. Let's change this to quarter inch scale, just so we have a nice correct scale. And uh, maybe let's try, can we do half inch? Can we get away with half inch? We can, okay, so we have half inch scale. So I'm gonna double click on this and hold down shift. And it's gonna let me pan this around a little bit. And oops, looks like our scale jumped off here, but it's okay. All right, so now we've got our elevation set up so we can start dimensioning this. So we can put a nice overall dimension here. Now, um, if you've been catching the dimensions I've been creating, these are in feet inches, which your uh, architect friends will very much appreciate, but most of us kitchen designers uh, think in inches. So you can change that. So you can go in here and you can go to dimension style. And right now we are in architectural. Um, you can change this to fractional and this will change it to 206 and a half. Um, you can change the precision if you want. Sometimes I do this if uh, you know I don't want to show something down to 64. If usually a quarter or an eighth is good enough. Um, but if you do want to appease your architect friends, there is no reason that you can't have both. So you can go like this and you can just have both next to each other. Um, and then if you wanna start dimensioning, you know, things like your cabinets here, so we can go, you know, here. And this is where you've gotta be a little bit more uh, perfectionist about how you get these dimensions, because you wanna click on just the right line so you get the proper lengths. And now here's a trick. You can see it sort of defaulted back to uh, feet inches. So what I can do 
is I can go uh, up to this eyedropper here and I can say, I can click on the one that we altered. So I changed this top dimension to inches. And then it, when I click it, it turns it into a paint bucket, which I can then paint on the dimensions that I've created. And the neat thing about this is once you do that once, any additional dimensions that you create from here on out will default to inches. So it's sort of a hidden but clever way uh, that you can alter your, your dimensions. And then we kind of go in here and get a read on where this fridge is. This one might be a little difficult. Get in here and see if we can. It's been a little while since I've worked on this model dimensioning it. So I don't remember if that's the correct length of that fridge, but we'll assume that it is. Um, so here's here's a good example right here. So this um, this you know for an odd dimension. So we've got uh, you know 30 and 27 30 seconds um, going into this wall. Now we know from looking at this SketchUp model here that this tall cabinet is running into this wall. And if you look closely here, you know, we scribed this into the wall. So chances are, you know, and again, it's been a little while since I put this kitchen together. Um, chances are this is probably going to be a 30 inch wide cabinet with a one inch scribe on the side. So you can go in and you can, you can address this a couple different ways. Um, you could just turn the precision down to like a half an inch or, you know, a quarter of an inch. So 30 inch three quarter. And that might, you know, remind you when you're ordering that um, you want a 30 inch cabinet with at least an inch scribe on the side. Um, you can also go in and you can actually manually edit the dimensions like this. And I would be careful doing that because once you manually edit a dimension, if you did later change the size of the cabinet, um, that number will stay. So if I made this cabinet 36 inches wide, that manually edited number will still say 30 inches. So, you know, use it your, use at your own risk. Um, the other thing that you can do as well is, you know, you're, you can do unlimited amounts of notes. So you could say one inch scribe. I could find the correct keys to, to put on my keyboard here. And when you make these notes, um, you can kind of move, move things around uh, like that. So, this is a crash course, uh, you know, in the layout. Um, you can essentially take your 3D model and turn it into dimension drawings. Now, here is the super cool thing. Um, the 3D model, the source 3D model, and the layout document are still connected. Even though you had to take the SketchUp model and sort of send it into layout, they still have a connection, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's say we go back to this kitchen model and we do something to it. So, oh, uh, let's see, what can we do? Let's go into, you know what? Let's say, we go to window and we go, let's go to 3D warehouse and let's find something to put, oh boy, what's happening here? Hey, that's me. There we go, what are we doing? So let's say the client wanted something interesting to add to this kitchen. So I'm gonna load this model in from 3D Warehouse and we're gonna put it in this kitchen. Probably shouldn't have picked such a large model. See, everybody's trying to get on 3D Warehouse at the same time, it's so popular. So we'll give this a second here for this model to pop in. Um, are there any questions while we're waiting for this thing to load up? Be happy to address any of them if you guys have them. Let's see. You are doing too good a job of illustrating everything perfectly clearly. You need to be a little more confusing in some of your descriptions so people have more questions. All right. Okay. So here, here's our here's our mod, right? So we have uh, you know, a client really, really wants to model on a SketchUp arcade machine directly in their kitchen. Big, big, big requirement. So we're gonna put this in. Oops, uh oh. Put this over here. Okay. So we've got our We've got our arcade machine here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this 3D model and we're gonna go back over to layout and let's go back, we're really gonna see this is on our one of our floor plans here. So let's go back here and uh, we, don't see the, we don't see that model in here. So what we can do, there, there's a, we have to update the, the viewports and you can do it individually or you can do them all at once. I'm just gonna do this one individually so you see it. 
so we can go in here and there's a little update button over here. And if I click this button, it's gonna, um, you know, again, probably because I use a super complex model, it's going to, you know, take a second, but there it is. There is our, our arcade machine um, put in here. So you're not limited to doing, this is not a one-way street. You know, you can go back and forth. So you can work on your layout document and then come back to your 3D model. And I think, um, you know, aside from the ridiculousness of putting an arcade machine um, in a kitchen like this, a sort of a more real world use case are oftentimes to put together, you know, a budget for a kitchen. I might go through and very quickly create a 3D model, put some cabinets in there, dimension them off quickly so I can get a quote. Um, and also like in a kitchen like this, I could get this countertop quote done ahead of time it doesn't so much matter how many cabinets, you know, if they're going to switch this one from a door drawer base to a full drawer base or a pull out, you know, pots organizer or something like that. The countertop is going to stay the same. So you can kind of utilize that. Like I could have sent this to layout, just pulled the dimensions for the countertop, gotten that quote while still designing the rest of the space and swapping out cabinets and things like that. So, so layout can be um, a pretty effective tool uh, for that. So it looks like I have eight minutes left. So let's do, let's do something else. What could we do in eight minutes? That could be interesting. We could make another view. We could, I don't know, Aaron, what else should I do with this kitchen? Uh, Layout wise in eight minutes. Do you have like a spreadsheet or something you could pull in and drop on there? So I, I'm actually kind of, I, I was kind of old school uh, with, <laughs> with when I, when I did kitchen pricing. So, this is going to sound super lame, but I just had a Google sheet and I had a, so <laughs> kitchen pricing is kind of a nightmare when it is a nightmare when you are trying to quote multiple companies against each other, which is in the show in my work that we had eight cabinet lines and I'm sure any kitchen designers on here are rolling their eyes at the amount of cabinet lines. I don't know why we had that many, but we did. Um, and so what I would do is I had a spreadsheet that had like a top five. And, you know, so something like this where you have, um, you know, like uh, maybe a, a B32, a B18, a DB3, you know, the, the, you kitchen designers know that nomenclature is somewhat similar across all the lines. So the way I would typically price a kitchen is I would go, where's my layout document? Here we go. I would go in with these dimensions and I would just, um, in my spreadsheet, I had pricing for popular cabinets and I would just populate a spreadsheet. It was really, really simple. It had you know, a price for each type of cabinet from each cabinet line. And every time I'd kind of get a new cabinet, I would just add it to the bottom of the sheet. And it's not how I would do my full pricing and ordering, but it's how I'd sort of get budgets together. Um, not, not the slickest way to do it, but you could, if you wanted to, copy with a newer version of layout, you can actually put, um, you can paste that, whoops, you can paste that data in here. So you can make these tables like this. Um, why am I, there we go. There we go, got it. Um, so you can paste from Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel into here and you can put a list of cabinets or a checkbox for things to check out on your site or, or whatever you needed to do. So. Um, I didn't have the, uh, oh, we have something in the chat here. Google Sheets rock. Yes, Google Sheets do rock. <laughs> um, i move that over here so I can see the chat. So yeah, I, I didn't have, um, you know, a super slick way. There, there's not um, specifically pricing in SketchUp. There are ways, and I do not have the time in the six minutes left, that you can actually run a report for the cabinets that you have in SketchUp. And actually, um, if, you, if you go into SketchUp and when you're putting together a kitchen like this, so I've got appliances and cabinets and furniture and things like that. Um, there is a feature in here called Generate Report and it will pull up this here. I do not have any report templates set up, but what you could actually do, depending on where you sourced your 3D cabinet models from, and where you source your components from, you can actually export a list of what's in your model. And so you can take that list, put it in a new spreadsheet. You can even assign prices to things that are in that list. And then you could bring that um, back into layout. And to be honest, it's been several years since, since I've done this. I know they've updated 
um, generate report. So I don't have a cool example to show you because I used to use the old version of generate report, um, yeah. but that is in there. And um, yeah, so that, that option is in there um, as well. Any, any other questions from anybody? Um, here, let's do, oh, go ahead, Aaron. Oh, no, I was just say, I think uh, you had some very clear examples there. So you did not leave a lot to ask because you did too good of a job showing. Oh, I, I have a recommendation, actually. If anybody is looking to learn more about SketchUp to Layout, what I would recommend is I have this, let's see if I can pull this up here. Um, a good friend of SketchUp, uh, Matt Donnelly makes this book called SketchUp to Layout. And he's, it's, it's made by um, Matt and uh, Nick Sonder, who are two really, really good, um, really excellent layout users. Um, it's a little architecture focused, but you can absolutely read this book and um, figure out how to do it for kitchens. In fact, he does a fair amount of kitchen examples in there. It's one of the, I think, the best well done guides to go from SketchUp to layout. So if you're looking for a book or a course or something to really um, dig in more in depth, I would um, highly recommend uh, checking that out. You can find it at mastersketchup.com. Um, Matt, who runs it, is a friend of mine. Um, this is not a paid endorsement. I just genuinely think it's a really good book. Um, and that might have helped him a little teeny tiny bit with it back in the day. So there's some of my <laughs> knowledge in there as well. So go, go check that out. Um, yeah, so there you go, SketchUp to Layout. It is your way to do dimensions and notated and scaled drawings really, really easily. Um, it, it, it is a part of SketchUp Pro, and I think what I forgot to mention yesterday is if you would like to purchase this, uh, we're doing, what, 15% off? Yeah. Nice. Um, do you have that, the, that code, Aubrey? I sure do, I'll drop it in the chat. Awesome. So yeah, if you're not already a SketchUp Pro subscriber, now is a great time to do it. 15% uh, is an excellent discount. Nice. I don't think I've seen 15% ever, um, or at least in recent history. So um, you, guys should, uh, you guys should get on it. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything that I have shown today, my contact information is where you registered. That is my email address. It comes uh, right to me. Um, you can email me with any questions and of course, you know, anybody at SketchUp too, um, I think would be more than happy to, to help you out with anything. So I think with that, uh, should I turn it over to you a minute and a half early, Aaron? Yeah, I think that's great. I just want to say, uh, thank you, Eric. Thanks for imparting more wisdom on a daily basis here has been awesome. And thank you all for attending. If you are looking for more SketchUp, we'll be back here in about half an hour, right at 11, wait, no. Yes, yes, 11.30 Eastern time. I have to do math every time we do a call like this. Uh, 11.30, Tammy Cody will be here giving us some more knowledge. And then again, uh, an hour later. So we have plenty of more sessions coming up and uh, hope to see you there. And I would say anybody who is here now, definitely come back and check out Tammy. Um, she has a, uh, much, she's excellent at SketchUp and has a much better design sense than me. <laughs> I, I will admit, uh, I did not design this kitchen, although I, I uh, recreated it from somebody else's design. So, uh, but Tammy actually makes some very good stuff from scratch and has a, a, a very good taste. So come back and check her out. Absolutely agree. All right, well, thanks again, Eric. Thank you all for coming and hope to see you soon.